Welcome back to another Fantasy Goodfellas video where we're going to talk about the top 30 running back rankings for week three. You ready? Let's do it. Fantasy Goodfellas. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. Oh, we're only on the field. Before we get started on this week's rankings, let me know how we did on week two. We hit on 22 of 30 this past week. Boom, boom, boom. Was an excellent week. We just missed our four others. We used a standard format, but uh, it was an amazing week. All right, so let's get started on the top 30 running back rankings for week three. Richard, take it over. And number one, we have Christian McCaffrey, who is at Houston. Christian McCaffrey's playing solid. I just wish that he could score more. You think it's going to happen this week? It's bound to happen. He gets a lot of touches. He's an amazing player. He's going to score more touchdowns. And number two, Derek Henry, home against Indianapolis. Well, in week two, it was King Henry. So how do you think he's going to do in week three? It, it's going to be more of the same that that's a run first team if derrick henry you know finds a stride like he did in week two it's going to be big trouble for the colts especially if carson wentz has two bad ankles and number three dalvin cook home against seattle okay dalvin cook had a good game last week is there any injury concerns for this week there could be we got to follow up on that but you know what he played through uh, a twisted ankle last week so i don't think it's too concerning we just hope Dalvin Cook, like Kristen McCaffrey, gets into the end zone more. And number four, Alvin Kamara at New England. Well, last week he didn't even make the top 30. Now you got him ranked four. What gives? Well, Alvin Kamara is Alvin Kamara. We, we think that was an anomaly last week. We expect the whole New Orleans offense to rebound, especially Kamara. And number five, Nick Chubb, home against Chicago. Nick Chubb's playing solid. Can he continue? Yes, you will. And, and again, the formula for the Browns is simple. Run, run, run. Chubb and Hunt are both going to do well, but especially Nick Chubb. And number six, Joe Mixon at Pittsburgh. Mixon didn't do a lot with his 20 carries. Is that going to change? I think it will. But more importantly, he's getting the touches. That's what counts. And Mixon is an explosive player. He's going to make things happen. And number seven, Aaron Jones at San Francisco. Wow, we that guy played great. Yeah, but but Aaron Jones is not going to get four touchdowns every week. But but it's good to see that that offense is starting to 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 pick up. So Aaron Jones goes as Aaron Rodgers goes, and as Green Bay goes. And number eight, Chris Carson at Minnesota. Chris Carson's playing good. I like what he's doing. Do you? Yeah, yeah. We knew that Seattle was going to run more this year, and Chris Carson's been effective. Russell Wilson has been Russell Wilson. I like the Seattle offense as a whole, and Carson will continue to do well. And number nine, Jonathan Taylor at Tennessee. I guess you're expecting Taylor to have a bounce-back game, right? Here's the problem. Indianapolis offense, right, even with Carson Wentz, is having their issues. And then Frank, right, loves committees. He loves to give other running backs opportunities. Just ride that Jonathan Taylor train. We said it all last year. He started to come on toward the end. Keep riding that train. We'll see what happens. At 10, we have David Montgomery at Cleveland. Montgomery had 3.1 yards per carry last week on 20 carries. He's going to have to do better with that, right? Yeah, but he but he will. Um, Montgomery, is a, he's a solid running back. And Nagy's made many mistakes, you know, including putting Andy Dalton at quarterback. But with Fields there, I think things might open up for Montgomery. I like him. 20 carries, you gotta love it. At 11, Antonio Gibson at Buffalo. You think Heineke is gonna help Gibson get the ball in the air? I don't know about Heineke, and, and, and I, I wish they would include Gibson more. Uh, it looks like J.D. McKissick is the guy right now catching the passes, but Gibson is their number one back. He should score a touchdown this week. And number 12, Najee Harris, home against Cincinnati. Seems to be a little disappointing, don't you think? Yeah, but he, he, he did better this week. The, the whole disappointment comes from that whole offense, that whole Steelers offense, starting from Ben Roethlisberger. But it's a great matchup this week, and I expect Najee to score. And number 13, Austin Eckler at Kansas City. 
Eckler had a good game last week. Now he's going against Kansas City. That defense doesn't seem that good in Kansas City, right? That defense looks terrible. It really does. And Austin Eckler caught nine passes. That's the most important thing. If he's going to be catching passes at the same rate he was last year, he's going to be fine. His owners are going to be fine. And number 14, Ezekiel Elliott, home against Philadelphia. Dallas was committed to the run last week. Are they going to continue committing to the run to help Elliott out? Okay, it seems like they might be running more, but they're, but Ezekiel Elliott is going to be sharing with Tony Pollard. So that brings his value down. That's why I'm still not putting him in my top 10. And number 15, Daryl Henderson, home against Tampa Bay. Henderson's going to need to get more receiving yards out of the backfield. Can he do it? He can, but that's not really his game. His game is just more the, the tough running. This is a good Rams offense, right? And he's going to get opportunities to score, and he has. And that's what's going to keep him inside our top 20. At 16, Miles Sanders at Dallas. We talked about Hurts vulturing those Russian TDs. He ran it in, and Sanders didn't. Is that what we should expect? It's going to happen. Hurts will get rushing touchdowns. But Miles Sanders is very talented himself. He's getting touches. They're playing the Dallas Cowboys. I think he scores this week. And number 17, Melvin Gordon, home against the New York Jets. So I guess you prefer Gordon over Williams, right? Um, not necessarily. Maybe not long term. This week I do. Uh, part of it is that Javante Williams may be hurt. I, I think it was a, an abdominal uh, injury potentially to Javante. So if that's the case, if he's going to be out, obviously Melvin Gordon's value goes up. And number 18, Damian Harris, home against New Orleans. I think last week you said he might be in the doghouse because he fumbled some of the game away. He got some playing time and did pretty well. What's happening in week three for him? Yeah, that's good for him. It was a good rebound week for Damian Harris. Um, he looks like the preferred, he is the preferred running back in New England. I think, I think he will continue to do well as long as he doesn't fumble. And number 19, Elijah Mitchell. Home against Green Bay. All right. Do we have any injury concerns with him? Yes, we do. He has a shoulder injury. So that's something we got to keep tabs of. But he's expected to play. And we know that's a run first offense in San Francisco. And he'll get a lot of touches. And number 20, DeAndre Swift. Home against Baltimore. Swift depends on a good quarterback play. Does he have that in Detroit? Swift is a talented running back. And he's getting a lot of garbage time points as Detroit will provide, because Detroit's always going to be behind. Goff is average at best. There are a lot of questions here, but for now, Swift is doing well. At 21, Kareem Hunt, home against the Bears. Okay, you got two running backs in your top 30. They're going against the Bears. Should they be concerned about the Bears? Bears are an average defense. We know Cleveland loves to run. And both of these guys, Chubb and Hunt, are amazing. And they're going to be in my top 30 most of the year. And number 22, Tyson Williams at Detroit. Williams is playing good. Do you think it's the offensive line that's helping him get these yards? Or is he just that good? No, it, it, it's the system. It's the offensive line. I mean, that's a team built to run. Um, this week, I expect Lamar Jackson maybe to, to take, take a step back because they're going to blow up Detroit. And I think they're just going to keep it on the ground, and I think that bodes well for Tyson. And number 23, Chase Edmonds at Jacksonville. Edmonds is going against Jacksonville. He should have a pretty decent game, right? Yes. I expect him to do very well. He has Kyler Murray. That defense is going to be confused. There will be openings for Edmonds. And number 24, Devin Singletary, home against Washington. Well, it doesn't look like Moss is eaten into his carries. But does Devin Singletary have a higher ceiling? No, I, I think Devin Singletary's ceiling is about where it is, between 20 and 30. He is in a, on a good team. He will score here and there. He will catch passes out of the backfield. But I think his ceiling is running back 20. And number 25, Javante Williams, home against the Jets. Well, it looks like a good matchup here, don't you think? Absolutely, and I think that's why Javante Williams, well, we have him in our top 30 despite the fact that he may be injured. We'll see. Follow that. Make sure he plays before you set him into your lineup. But Javante Williams could eventually take over, can take Melvin Gordon's spot. And number 26, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, home against the L.A. Chargers. I think you've said that he's a small running back, and it just doesn't seem like he's on the field a lot. 
for what they're doing. Can he improve on this? Clyde edwards alaire has been a huge disappointment since being drafted in the first round. And this week he fumbled away the game. Things are not looking good for him. He may not be in our top 30 much longer, but he is on the Chiefs, the best offense in the league. And number 27, Leonard Fournette at the LA Rams. I know Fournette can catch the ball, but it just seems like they just gave up on the run and just they're using Tom Brady to win these games. Does that continue? We know Brady loves to throw. Fournette can catch the ball. When it comes to close yardage, he's going to get the ball. He's their number one back. I like Leonard Fournette. And number 28, Miles Gaskin at Las Vegas. Gaskin's playing really good, but what's going on with their quarterbacks and how does that bode well for him? We'll see. I mean, Jacoby Brissett obviously downgrade Gaskin, and I think that's that's why we have him so low. But he's a shifty runner. He can catch balls out of the backfield. I think he can find success, even with Brissette quarterback. And number 29, Saquon Barkley, home against the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, I got to ask, are you just not high on Barkley? No, I love Barkley. I love him. It's just, you know, he, he's still coming back from his injury. But this is, a, this is a good week to go off, right, against the Falcons. And number 30, Mike Davis at the New York Giants. That whole Atlanta offense isn't playing good. Do you think they can find their stride this week? I think they can. I think this is a good matchup. I, I think they did better in week two than they did in week one. So we'll see if the trend continues. But Mike Davis is the bell cow back. He should be putting up better numbers. Thanks for coming on here and sharing your top 30 running back rankings for week three. Remember to like and subscribe. And please ask your questions in our comment section. We'll be here all year. We're ready to answer questions. We're ready to help you. The fantasy good fellas. Boom, boom. Rolling on the field. Touchdown. The fantasy good fellas.